receive the joy of your glory, giving thanks to God, who has called you into the heavenly kingdom. Alleluia. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And with your spirit, As we come together to celebrate these sacred mysteries on this eighth day of the octave of Easter, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners, Lord have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the Son of God and the Son of Mary. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. And let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded to them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, 
bring the proceeds of the sale and put them at the feet of the apostles. And they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone that believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God. And everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For whoever is begotten by God conquers the world, and the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The Word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his sides. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord, and Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. And Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise well, good morning. Boy, doesn't 24 hours make a big difference? Yesterday it felt like winter was back. <clears throat> Today, we've got a beautiful sunny day. What a nice day it's going to be. We usually, when we stand up here and try to inform you of something that is important in the readings, we usually start with the first reading and the second reading, and then, f then fill in what the prophecy from the first reading is from the Old Testament into what Jesus is doing in the gospel. But now, since it's Easter season, we have to flip that on its, on its head. We have to start with the gospel and then see how that unfolds with the first reading as we read from the Acts of the Apostles. So today we see the disciples, they're in the upper room. Jesus has been crucified. <clears throat> He's been buried. And it seems that all of their hopes, their dreams, their desires, everything that they thought was going to go their way has crumbled around them. As I said, Jesus has, has been killed. They're scattered now. They're afraid. And they think that the Jews are going to come and arrest them and at best put them in prison and at worst possibly crucify them. And in all of this midst, Jesus comes and appears to them. And what does he say? He says, peace be with you. He doesn't ask them why you betrayed me. Why you denied me? Why you abandoned me? Why did you leave me all alone in my one hour of need? Why couldn't you stay awake while we were in the garden? None of that, no condemnation. He simply says, peace be with you. And then he breathes on them and gives them the grace of the Holy Spirit. And yet we see that one of them, Didymus, the twin, Thomas, is not there. And like so many people in our world, he wants physical, literal proof that Jesus has been raised. He's not going to believe the other apostles. He's not going to believe Mary Magdalene. He's not even going to believe Mary, Jesus' mother. He wants to put his finger in the nail marks and his hand in his side. That's the only way that he'll believe. And lo and behold, a week later, Jesus appears once again. And Thomas's doubt changes to certainty. His blindness is taken away 
and he sees the risen Lord in all of his glory. And he utters that one line of scripture that is read nowhere else in all of the, of the Bible. My Lord and my God. And we might feel a little pity for Thomas. We might even think, well, he wasn't much of an apostle. But of all the apostles that Jesus had, Thomas will be the one who will go the farthest in spreading the gospel. Peter may have been the rock. Paul may have established <coughs> more churches or visited more places. But Thomas is the one who will go to India and literally bring the gospel to a new continent. And there he will be martyred for the faith. Fast forward then to our first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, and we see what this belief in Jesus Christ has done. These men are no longer afraid. They're no longer being timid. They're no longer hiding in an upper room with the curtains drawn. They're now together as one voice, one people, one heart, one mind, all proclaiming the greatness and the glory of God, taking out to the Jews of Jerusalem the good news that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and that our sins can be forgiven that there is mercy and compassion for all, and that whether we are a Jew or a Gentile, a believer or a non-believer, if we turn and believe in Jesus Christ as the Son of God, we not only have a joy that is so great, not only do we have eternal life, but we have a disposition in our hearts and in our minds that this world can never overcome. Because that's what St. Peter tells us in that second reading. That if we believe in that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, if we truly believe what he preached and taught, if we truly have taken that into our hearts and we live that day by day, there is nothing that this world can ever do to us that can overcome that certainty of faith. There's no illness, no disease, no person, no principality, no power, not even death itself can overcome our love for God because God loved us so much that he gave us his only son. And just as the mission of the apostles was to go out and preach the good news, to forgive sins, to take the message of the resurrection into a darkened world, that message remains the same for us today almost 2,000 years later. We are called not to sit in our darkened rooms, not to be blinded by the ignorance of this world, but to open our eyes, our minds, our hearts, and our mouths to the glory and praise of God, to go out into the streets, into our homes, to our workplaces, and take the message of forgiveness, of compassion, of love to all of those around us, never forsaking or, or worrying about what may come our way, <clears throat> knowing that, yes, there may be times when people don't agree with us. There may be times when people even reject us. There may be times when it may even cost us something, perhaps even our very lives. But the love of God for us overcame all sin. It destroyed all death. And if we hang on to that same faith, if we live it each and every day, then we too will conquer all that comes our way. Not conquering to rule over, not conquering to lord over, but conquering to serve all. Conquering the hearts and the minds of the people, of bringing light into a darkened world, of truly being that salt or that leaven out there in this world, that all may come to know and to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he suffered, died, and was buried, rose again on the third day, ascended into heaven, sits at the right hand of the Father, and intercedes for each and every one of us. It's a message of not only faith, but it's a message of hope. This is what the world needs now more than ever, is the good news of Jesus Christ of a life filled with hope of eternal life, of a life that overcomes all obstacles 
through the forgiveness of sins, a life that brings the eternal love of God into the hearts of our fellow citizens. My dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounce Satan and his works and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask all of you, do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty show? Do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? I do. Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? I do. Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? I do. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Now that we have renewed our baptismal promises and confessed our faith in Jesus Christ and his church, let us turn to our Heavenly Father and offer our petitions. For Pope Francis and all pastoral leaders, may Christ draw them ever closer to himself and intercede in their every need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civic leaders, may the Lord bless them with the skills and talents they need for the communities they serve. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who face addictions, may God's grace give them courage in their struggles. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those gathered here and all whom we love, through the grace of the Holy Spirit, may we grow ever closer to our Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the generosity of our community may assist those who are most in need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
Let us pray for a renewed understanding of our baptismal dignity as sons and daughters of God the Father and a commitment to living in peace with our sisters and brothers in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Clara Heath, may they soon rest with all the angels and saints forever. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of this Mass, which are the re for the repose of the soul of Bertha Taylor, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, on this Easter day, we give praise and glory to you for all the gifts that you have given to us. Fill our hearts with the same spirit that inspired the disciples and apostles to go out into the world and proclaim the good news. We ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me of my sins. <clears throat> Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain an ending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right, really right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord but on this day above all to lodge you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise that they offered for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you. Also for those to whom you've been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the many gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, 
graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And now, at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, and by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With your Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Bring your hand and feel the place of the nails, and do not be unbelieving, but believing. Alleluia. Alleluia.
And let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. All right, just some quick announcements here. Uh, I know last week was the first weekend of the month, but it was also Easter. Uh, and if you threw any money in the, in the basket last week for the needy of Randolph County, we certainly appreciate it. But this is actually uh, the week that we were going to do that. So as you leave church today, be sure you throw a few extra dollars in there. Um, the Holy Deacons will be having a Divine Mercy service uh, here at church today after the 11 o'clock Mass. So if you'd like to join them, please do so. <clears throat> there is a March for Life on April the 14th down at the State Capitol. See flyer in the back of church and on the website. There's a 9.15 pre-rally with a 10 a.m. march. Uh, when I got here, we didn't have any mass intentions, and you all have been very good about giving us mass intentions, but now we've caught up with you, and we're beginning to run out. Uh, so if you have a mass intention for a loved one who's passed, or a loved one who hasn't, or a particular person, or an item like peace on earth, or goodwill to men, be sure to uh, drop it in an envelope, and we'll get those on our calendar ASAP. Don't forget to leave your markers uh, in the pew so we know where to clean, and if you'd like to help afterwards, that would be wonderful. Remember to bring cans of corn and beans for the Cristo Center, as well as items for birthright. Both of those boxes are in the back of church. And if you didn't know, but you heard in the petitions, uh, Clara Heath passed away last week. We will be having her funeral mass tomorrow at 11. Uh, everybody's invited. We just ask that you uh, uh, wear your mask and socially distance while you're in church, all right? All right, everybody, enjoy the last day of Christmas Day, and then tomorrow we can start partying during Christmas, I mean Christmas. Let's try this one more time. Easter season, all right, Easter season, okay? Take good care of yourselves, enjoy the beautiful day the Lord has given to us, and now if everyone would be so kind as to bow your head and pray for God's blessing. May, <clears throat> may God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was put pleased to confer on each of you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his many blessings. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make each of you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon each of you and remain with you forever. Amen. <clears throat> Go in peace, alleluia, alleluia. Uh.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 